got lots of lo lots of looks because of my sweet equipment. It wouldn't be the first time that people have noticed me for my equipment. I always have superior equipment, guys. Just remember that. This is some random chicken on the side of the road. Do you think he's going to cross the road? For 17 days, a film crew and I would get tangled up in the hustle and the bustle of the Philippines. We would roam the streets hunting for the roots of our story and always looking for that perfect shot. Our journey would take us to some little places and we would film some little people. We would hop all around the island trying to capture the essence of the Philippines. Yeah. Looking for all those little details yeah. to tell a big story. I'm here working on a documentary, like five or six pieces. They're small, short documentaries about life in the Philippines. I am a sound recordist. In the United States, we call it a sound mixer. In the movie business, we don't record sound to the camera. We do something called dual system sound. The camera records video and I record all the audio. The job of mixing, not really mixing anymore. You just record stuff. I mean, I guess that's why the British call my position a sound recordist rather than a sound mixer because it is few and far between that my mix actually ends up being what is featured in a movie. Every now and then on a documentary piece when I'm mixing, the editor will use my mix, but for the most part, they usually just do their own thing and that's fine, whatever. Today should be fun. We're gonna be doing some uh, B-roll for the project. So let's take an adventure. In Metro Manila, just getting there is an adventure unto itself. Every day, Metro Manila is hit with a wave of mechanized madness. In the slam dance of man and machine, it's amazing that anyone gets anywhere. The streets are choked with everything going everywhere all at once. Yet to stay frosty and on top of your game on these streets, one fall smooth and it's game over. So uh, this tricycle got, just got hit by this truck and uh, this girl almost got killed in there, man. It's craziness. Man, but look at this, look at this intersection, it's psycho. Traffic is the monster that tries to strangle Metro Manila on a daily basis, but the rhythm of the city keeps beating on. And under the canopy of the Kilowatt jungle is where we make our connection and tap into the pulse of the city. From the basketball courts to the back streets, people are doing their best just to get by. Our story takes us deep into the back alleyways, into a labyrinth that the locals call Happy Land. The hardest of the hard live here. There's no easy living in this neighborhood. The end of the line is the Happy Land Harbor, a seaside community living on the edge. Camera department makes some bold moves and goes deep into the details. There's some hard, hard living in Happy Land. The struggle is most definitely real on these streets.
we scoot to another part of town to collect more bits of our story. With almost unlimited filming access, you would be surprised at the places where we couldn't shoot. We're being told that we can't shoot around here because we need a permit. We're a small crew, but yeah, they've just been told that we can't shoot anywhere around here. We're just gonna really put it down around the day. So uh, hopefully we can get some more stuff off. We'll see. Because of our restrictions, I've been selected to be fire watch. Sometimes you gotta be stuck in the rear with the gear. We need to go small because uh, we're drawing a lot of attention. So it's a real shame because I was really ex hoping to get sounds of people ooing and aahing over the dungeon walls and stuff. Uh, ambient sounds, we call ambient sounds. The sound of the environment that's around. There'd be plenty of ambiance to capture outside of the city. Out here, we would experience a whole other side of Philippine life. We take a trip through the dusty pathways of Alcala in Pangasinan and chase life the best that we could. When you shoot a documentary, no details too small. Camera is always rolling and capturing everything. You record hours of footage, hoping to capture one spark of life, even if that means chasing every duck in the village. We bounce from shooting livestock and get our knees dirty shooting a local sporting event. And we make friends with the locals. Goats, little tiny goats. Goats, little tiny goats. Hey, little goat. Little tiny goats. There was a cool calm across the community, but as calm and as charming as village life might seem. It doesn't take away from the fact that for a great many, life in the Philippines is incredibly rough. That's the uh, flood level. That's how they judge the flood levels here. If it gets all the way to the top there, full of evac force evacuation. It's craziness, man. And as irony goes, this display of umbrellas is just down the street from that pole. And as the sun goes down on the countryside, we pack up and head back to the city. We leave behind the quiet, dusty pathways of the province and speed headlong back into the mean streets of Metro Manila. There were a few more moments that we needed to capture before you could put this one in the can. Hi guys. Hi. So we are in a very busy spot of Divisoria. Big major uh, shopping area, as you can see. Lots of activity, lots of movement. Um, lots of moving parts happening here. In the heart of Metro Manila is Divisoria, one of the most important commercial centers in the Philippines. Tens and thousands of shoppers, vendors, and employees descend upon these streets daily to sell and buy bargain wares. It's such a popular destination that most of the thousands of jeepneys that operate the city have at least one stop here. You're not gonna find Louis Vuitton, Gucci, or Prada but you might be lucky enough to find yourself a $60 Rolex or a knockoff pair of Air Jordans. I know for damn sure where in the city I need to go to get a dog collar and leash. Camera department makes more bold moves. Well, we got the GoPro mounted. Let's 
let's hope it survives. I told our driver that we didn't want chaos. And that was the only instruction on where to go was chaos. So uh, hopefully they return alive. And when the camera crew finally returns, we catch a little night market action. In what seemed like a matter of moments, the streets of Divisoria transformed from traffic clogged streets into a farmer's market with a wide array of food goods like bitter melon and calamansi, a mixture between lime and lemon, a citrus fruit native to the Philippines. But fruits and vegetables aren't the only thing you'll find here. Like many other Asian cultures, seafood is a staple item on many Filipinos' diets, and there was a wide selection to choose from here. But it wasn't all shrimps and fish. If you were seeking beef, all you had to do was hop up on the sidewalk. This makeshift butcher was making quick work of the slabs of beef that would appear from nowhere. They were a lean, mean meat processing machine using band saws, cleavers, and sharp cutting scales to turn out cuts of meat in a matter of minutes. My man here was so confident in skills, he did it with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. After we collect a mountain of footage, we pack it in and call this one a wrap. After a 20 year long career in the movie business, this would be my last job as a Hollywood sound mixer. And I couldn't think of a better place and better people to end it with. Check one, two, check one, two, check, 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 testing, check, check. Hello, kitty.